Well, good morning and welcome to worship. We enter into the Advent season, a new church year, four weeks set aside to prepare, wait, anticipate the coming of Christ. And Advent is a season of looking back to that first Christmas, looking ahead to his coming again, and looking for the signs of the promise of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. God with us. So thank you for joining us this morning or whenever you might watch the, the video. Reminder, next Sunday we'll be doing Holy Communion here in the parking lot. Um, for those of you who would stay home, I would remind you of the Northwest Minnesota Senate website and the resources for Home Communion. Um, take a look at that if you're interested in gathering with us via the video and receiving communion as a family there. Stories every day beginning the 1st at 5.30. Alex has recruited some church members to read stories all through the month of December. 5.30, those will be posted. And thanks to all who helped make that possible and to Alex for organizing all that technical stuff. Among the uh, decorating that's been happening around the church, the angel tree is out in the narthex, filled with opportunities for us to share our blessings with those who stand in need. That narthex door will be open today after worship, and then throughout the week if you want to stop in and pick up an angel, and then their instructions about getting them back to the church please sign up and tell us which angel you took so we can keep track of, track of those angels and those gifts. Thank you very much for that. And so we gather and we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And we light the Advent wreath one candle at a time to re remember the, that the light of Christ grows grows with us each day. We praise you, O God, for this evergreen crown that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the first candle on this wreath, rouse us from sleep, that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain, and whose day draws near. Amen. Our opening hymn, Awake, Awake, and Greet the New Moon.
This is the prayer of the day. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First lesson is from the 64th chapter of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah brings God's word to Israel, contemplating an uncertain future, the return from exile, the return to a holy land and a city and a nation that has laid empty for a generation, and the desire that Christ might come with forgiveness, that God might come with forgiveness and love and hope and light. Isaiah 64. <clears throat> oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your ma name known to your people, to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You may meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our sin, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. And then Psalm 80. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine, that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. And then from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the first chapter. Grace to you and peace from our God and Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And then from the 13th chapter of Mark, a warning about the end times. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. 
Then you will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with their own work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at the dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Here ends the readings. Sisters and brothers, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Maybe a second greeting borrowed from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. I give thanks for you and I give thanks to God. As Paul puts it, the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. And he goes on to talk about the gifts that we have received. The word has been strengthened among us. We lack nothing in any spiritual gift. And we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthening us to the end and a reminder that God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And of course, Jesus' words, a reminder three times in the Gospel reading. Beware and keep awake, keep awake, keep awake, because the Lord is coming among us. I've shared this story in the past, but back in 1996, the Lanus family, 15 of us, eight adults, seven kids from ages seven to 16, took a little trip in, in February down to Orlando and we did the Disney thing. We'd planned it months in advance, but it just so happened that the day we flew out of Minneapolis, it was 36 below zero. So it was a good time to leave. And we did the Disney thing, Magic Kingdom two days and Epcot Center and the Universal Studios. We went over to SeaWorld. We went back for a laser light show at SeaWorld. By the last day, we were kind of theme parked out. So we went to a water park and did the slides and the guns and the spray and the just playing in the water in February in Florida. Then we all decided to jump on a tube and float the lazy river, and we thought we had been specific one time around. The seven kids kind of went ahead of us, and the adults floated slower. When the older kids got to the end, they got out, as we had discussed, and then the adults got to the end, and we got out, and our youngest eight-year-old son, Jared, wasn't among us. And it seemed like the sun grew dark and the moon turned red and there was panic. And we spread out and we searched for an hour. We called on the people there to make announcements and to spread the word that there's this little red-headed boy running around. Help us find him. After an hour, he was found. When I saw him, I hugged him, and then I scolded him for separating from the group. When his mother saw him, she hugged him and then scolded him for being separated from the group. But we weren't really mad at him. 
We were mad at ourselves for letting him slip away. It was our responsibility to keep him safe. I thought of that as I read this text from Isaiah, the people of Israel wondering, wondering where was their God who had promised to keep them safe. O oh God, let your presence be known among us. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence and you would make your name known to all the nations. Make your name known to us. Bring your love, your grace, your forgiveness, your reassurance to us. I mean, after all, Lord, we have witnessed powerful things. The exodus out of Egypt, the safety through the Red Sea, the care through the wilderness wanderings, the protection and the victories of the conquest of the promised land, you have made yourself known over and over and over again. And as we look here in exile to the end and returning home, make your presence known again among us. And then God's word through Isaiah lifts up this image. O oh Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, and you are the potter. I've never worked with pottery myself, but I know that you take the clump of clay and it needs to be centered, perfectly centered on the wheel for the forming to take place. That centering is a nice image. The word of God, Jesus Christ, our Savior, the promise of the Lord to God's people. It's kind of a messy process. You gotta have water in there and the spinning wheel and try and shape that pot the way that the potter wants it shaped, just so. And then there's a wire or a thread and it's scraped across the wheel and the pot can be lifted off the wheel and free into the world. That's a nice image, too. And yet, perhaps, a reminder that even after the pottery's been formed, the firing is yet to come. Trials and tribulations and the fire of daily living, yet to come. Jesus tells his disciples that they should stay awake, that the end times are coming, they should keep alert, but they should also be free in the world to share the grace that they have received, the word that will never pass away until Jesus comes. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. And that's good news. Beware, keep alert, share what you have received. The second coming is foretold and the word needs to be let loose in the world. I shared that story about losing our son at the water park down in Orlando for an hour. Once Jared realized he was separated from the group, he got out of the, out of the uh, floating river and sat beside it and waited waited because he knew we'd look for him. He knew we'd find him. We wouldn't stop looking till we found him. He didn't really understand the scolding because he was perfectly calm. He knew to sit quietly and wait for us to come. That's a nice image too and an invitation for us that even in the midst of trials and tribulations, in the midst of uncertainties and pandemics and division and all that the world seems to be filled up with today, that we can be still, know that God is our God and that God is constantly seeking us. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains might quake so that you might make your name known to your people because you are the father 
we are your people and you have promised to be Emmanuel with us always. Isaiah used that phrase, oh, that the heavens would be torn apart. Mark used that phrase twice. At the baptism of Jesus, the heavens were torn and the dove, the Holy Spirit, descended on Jesus. And then on Good Friday, at the crucifixion, at the end, the temple curtain was torn in two. The heavens opened and the presence of Christ was made known and the promise of eternal life was shown the power over death through all of life. Be still and know that you are God's child, that God is constantly seeking through the power of the Spirit to find us, to strengthen us, to comfort us, to lead us, to take us home. Our hymn of the day, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. We lift up our prayers for all those in need. We pray for your church, the ministries we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice and peace and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world. Draw near to us always. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Lord, we pray for people who are in crisis as the season change, for those without homes, for those who are unemployed, for those in poverty or facing uncertain uncertain food resources. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, ease their minds, and inspire us to reach out and help those in need. We pray for the people in our congregation and our families who live with anxiety and pain, addiction, illness, uncertainty, doubt. Ease our suffering. Support us when we struggle. Hear our prayers. Lord, we give you thanks for this season of Advent. Help these weeks prepare us for opportunities to share your light. 
as those who have gone before. And we give you thanks for the lives and witness of those who have spoken words of justice and peace and healing, those who proclaimed your word. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. For all these prayers, Lord, and for those not spoken, draw us near to you. Receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers. Thank you for sharing in this time and remember if you are willing and able to remember the angel tree in the narthex either today or sometime in the days ahead and thank you for that sharing of God's good gifts. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.